When it comes to buying a home in the Bay Area, one of the most common concerns from the buyer is the condition of the pre-owned homes that they're buying. With most of the homes being built several decades ago, there are often going to be repairs and maintenance costs incurred in the next owner, yet the price of the pre-owned homes are still very expensive. So the question comes to mind, why not own a new construction homes from the builder? This is exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. Hello everybody, my name is Bo Ji He, your local Bay Area real estate agent. Today, I want to talk about new construction homes, the pros and cons, the process, and all the good stuff. Now, before we get started, if you like this type of content, please like and share if you haven't already, and I would appreciate your support. Now, let's get in. As you know, buying a new construction home often means you're getting something brand new, which means no immediate repairs and maintenance costs after the purchase. Now, assuming you did your final inspection and caught everything that needs to be addressed before closing. Most builders often offers warranty plans, which provides additional peace of mind. This is often the number one reason why people love buying new construction homes versus previously owned homes. Another reason people are attracted to buying a new construction home is that when the market is hot, pre-existing homes often receive multiple offers in just days, leaving most buyers unable to compete with offers. Now, new construction home is often first come, first serve. Now, although the game can change too, and I've seen it happen before where builders also play the game of bidding more, which we'll talk about later. Additionally, builders often offer buyers incentives in forms of closing costs, additional free upgrades or lower interest rate if you go with their lender. These type of incentives often don't exist when you are buying pre-owned homes. However, incentives are heavily dependent on the market condition. So it's not always going to be there or it's not going to be the same and or it may not even be available at all. So definitely check with the builder and don't just assume. Last but not least, with the pre-owned homes, what you see is what you get in most cases. But with new construction homes, you get to choose your own floor plans, upgrades, and finishes, which is nice. With that, let's talk about some of the downsides when it comes to buying a new construction homes. So the number one downside, or I should say a limitation rather, is the location availability. In most of the major cities, especially here in San Francisco Bay Area, the land availability is scarce and most new construction homes are going to be further away from the city there are still new communities being developed in the city's prime location however they're very few and they're often mostly condos and townhouses due to the land scarcity this means you will likely have to give up on your desired location if you're looking for new construction homes this could be a major turnoff for a lot of buyers as real estate is often all about locations. The number two is the unknown closing date. When you're buying a new construction home from the builder, you have to play their games and they will build your home based on their timeline, their system and their resources. So just because you made your deposit, it doesn't mean you're getting the key in the next 30 days. It's often several months out or it could be a year out. On the other hand, if you're buying a previously owned homes, you will have much more control over your closing date and your moving date. Number three, contract and negotiations. Like I mentioned in number two, you're playing the builder's game and using their contract. Your ability to negotiate is more restricted. Doesn't mean you can't, you just have to play their games. So the price that you agree to pay can change during the process. And I'm not saying it happens every time, but it can happen. And I've seen it happen before. Of course, if it does happen, buyer will be given choice to either proceed or withdraw. Nonetheless, this is just an additional uncertainties that buyer will have to face. So make sure you read and understand the builder's contract thoroughly before making the decision. And number four is the additional cost. 
like previously mentioned, if you're buying an existing home, as long as it's in moving ready, turnkey condition, what you see is what you get. After the close, you get the key, you enter the new home, everything that you have seen will be there except the furniture. But when you're buying a new construction home, what you see on the website is just their base model price. It's not the final price you'll end up paying. They're going to be design upgrade costs, structural upgrade costs, and lock premiums that can potentially add much more to the buyer's final purchase price. In addition, after adding your upgrades and customizations, what you're buying still is just a building with finished exterior and interior. However, there's not going to be any landscaping in the backyard, no fridge, no laundry. So these are going to be additional money that you'll be spending on top of your final purchase price. If you have decided to move forward with a new construction home, you need to understand the buying process. So just to give you a quick rundown. After you register with a builder, you tour a bunch of their homes, you pick your floor plan, the lot, then you negotiate on price and term. You even ask the builder for incentives. After all that is done, once you decide to move forward you will need to first get pre-approved by the lender and after that a purchase agreement will need to be signed now this step could be different depending on builders process uh, i've said before some will ask you to make an offer while others would just send you the contract with everything already negotiated for you to sign regardless this is where you finalize your pick your design upgrade your structural upgrade and the contingencies and all the other terms with them in the contract once the contract is signed you're putting down the deposit into escrow you officially lock in the place then you start the process of financing your purchase with a lender different builders may have incentives if you work with their lender some even offer cash incentives if you're paying cash so it's good to know your options before making your final decision. As your home undergoes construction, there will be opportunities for you to inspect the home at various stages. Some have what they call groundbreaking ceremonies where you can go and take pictures of this meaningful day with a shovel and, you know, a soul sign and all that. Then there's also going to be frame walkthrough inspections where you will be notified this is when the builder puts a drywall so that you can see the structure the floor plan the electrical plumbing and hvac and after the drywall approximately within a week before closing your home is much pretty much done and you'll be invited back for a new home orientation this is where you identify cosmetic issues check the quality of the work and the last day is when we close a final walkthrough is done and you get the key to your new home. This process is pretty simple and straightforward. I highly recommend you to consult with a seasoned real estate agent that have experience working with builders for a consultation. It won't cost you anything. With that, there are a couple of things buyers need to pay attention before deciding on what to expect. First, understand different builders' process. Not all of them will have the same process and it, it could also change as the market condition changes. For example, some builders have wait lists in place and they'll do their releases in phases. Now, depending on where you are at on the wait list, the wait could be very long. By the time when you're the next in line, the price that you see now is likely to be different from the price you saw before. And if it was in a bullish market where home prices are going up, then the sooner you get in, the better. Because the builder releases more unit on the next phase, the sell price will often go up as the market goes up. And you would by then already enjoy a nice little appreciation on the value of your future home. Now, in an extreme hot market like the one we had during the pandemic, builders are also creating bidding wars, just like in the pre-owned market where they make buyers submit their best offers online and bid against each other and i've seen that happen so it is important to understand the current buying process that the builder has and you evaluate it against your situation and decide whether you're ready for it or not secondly like i mentioned before read the contract thoroughly 
Negotiating with builder is not as flexible as with individual sellers from the pre-owned market. I know two cases, and it actually happened a lot more often, but I know these two because it happened to someone that I knew in the past where the buyer submitted an offer to the builder, offer got accepted, and the buyer changed their mind the next day. So the buyer just decided to ghost the builder by not making the deposit thinking that the builder would just let them go and move on to the next buyer. However, in this case, builder's attorney made a demand to the buyer and the buyer's agent demanding the deposit or threatened lawsuits for breach of contract. Now, the buyer's deposit would be at risk or the buyer would be forced to buy if they wanted to save their deposit. So when dealing with the builder, definitely take the time to understand the contract and understand the rule before you play. Thirdly, understand the location of the new homes. If the new construction home is built on a newly developed land, then you should know what is the land like. Basically, understand the risk of either living near natural hazards or pollutions or noises. Builders will typically provide environmental related materials for buyers. If not, you should ask them for it and continue doing your research. What was the land previously used for? Was there any different buildings that got torn down? If so, what kind of building was that? What was the future development plans of this area? What are the schools like in this area? Now, these are all great questions to ask and research on. Number four, do home inspections. Your new home will be built in stages. They have to break the ground, pull out all the weeds, lay the foundation, frame the house, and set up the water, plumbing, electrical, HVAC system before closing it with the drywall. And then the finishes. I always recommend to inspect during each stages. Now, most importantly, do an inspection before they put the drywall and take a look at how everything is built. Understand how the house is wired, the floor plan, get familiar with the plumbing, the HVAC system, ask them how they will insulate the home later on, make sure that all the structural upgrades that you requested are being built the right way. It is important if you want them to move things around for your needs, it's easier to ask now than later. During the new home orientation, make sure that all the fixtures are working and all your design upgrades are done with your requirements. Check the paint job, mark up any cosmetic defects for them to fix before the final walkthrough. Now, building a house isn't like building a car because most of the work are done through manual labor. Therefore, there's always potential when the work is done with flaws or your idea and thoughts sometimes didn't come across perfectly in the work. Therefore, when you're inspecting a home at each stage, it is important to take your time and don't rush. Don't assume everything is fine just because everything is brand new. In most situations, you will need to request and schedule a time for the inspection. It is always a good idea to go with an experienced real estate agent on these inspections. And sometimes, you should even consider hiring a third party inspectors to do the inspections for you. It's worth the money. Last but not least, research and compare all the builders. Not all new construction homes are built by the big production builders like the Toll Brothers, the Lennars, the DR Hortons. And even with these builders, you should still research about them. Understand what type of materials they tend to use their pricing models, their styles, and more importantly, do they have full-time construction crews or do they tend to hire part-time and temp workers for each project? These are all great questions to ask. Also, consulting with a seasoned real estate agent in the market such as myself is highly recommended. If you do decide to buy a new construction home, you can either choose to go deal with the builders yourself or have a professional to represent you guide you and help you through the contract and home inspections and help you point things out. Typically, agents are rewarded by builders, so there is no cause for the buyers, which is nice. Why not, right?
Should you buy a new construction home or not is entirely up to the buyer's personal preference and situations. New construction homes come with its own pros and cons like I previously mentioned as well as a new set of things to look out for. If you have more questions about this topic, feel free to reach out to me and my contact information is down in the description. I would love to hear your situation and see what I can do to help you. With that, I wish you nothing but the best in year 2024. See you on the next video.